Hey there, friends. Heather Creekmore here. You're listening to the Compared to Who show. I'm glad you're listening today because it's day 21 of our 30 days to pray for your body image. And I don't know how you're doing it. I don't know if you're listening every day, if you're catching an episode every now and then, but however you choose to interact with this 30 days of content, I hope you're praying. Like really, that's the most important point I want to make through this entire series is that it's okay. It is good to pray for our body image. We have a far greater power to beat body image issues with than the next diet or the next fitness fad. Yes, that's right. Prayer. God wants us to be free in this area, my friends. And so that's why I hope you're praying along. Well, today our topic is purpose. And I kind of love this one because it's almost unexpected. But friends, let me tell you, it is weird the way it works. So I don't know. I was a skeptic. I'm a little bit of a cynic. Okay, God's working on me on that front. And so I feel like if I had heard this advice maybe 10, 15 years ago, I may have poo-pooed it. Like, yeah, right, that's not going to work. But friends, I have to tell you, over and again, as I work with women, I see this play out. The truth is, once you start to discover even just a little bit of what God made you for, what purpose he has given you, it is crazy how some of the weight of body image issues starts to lift. Now, I could give you a dozen examples of where I've seen this happen, but one thing that I do when I coach someone is we take a spiritual gifts inventory, a spiritual gifts test, and I start talking to them about the times in their life when they feel alive, the times in their life when they are doing things where they get that, ah, this is what I was created for kind of feeling. I'll tell you, for me, sometimes when I'm speaking in front of a group of women, I will just feel this strange I don't mean this to be weird, but almost like a warmth, like a comfort of like, yes, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I was made for. This is what I am called to do. This is how God created me to serve him. And so it's funny, friends, but so many women I work with, and maybe this applies to you too, don't know why they were created. In fact, I will go even further to say that many of the women that I have worked with in the past have never been able to get over the belief that they were created to look good. Now, not that they would have ever cashed it out that way, right? But the messages coming from family, friends, from culture all told them for so long that their greatest contribution to life was being the thin one or the pretty one or the put together one. Now, in some cases, I've worked with clients in their 60s, even 70s, who are coming to a point where they're like, that is not my purpose. I get that now. Aging is real. I cannot be the hottest in the room (laughs) until my deathbed. What do I do? What was I made for? Why am I so focused on the external when God has given me these great gifts to use for his purpose? And that's what will make me really feel alive. And so friends, I just want us to pray today that God will begin to reveal to you what that purpose is he has for your life. Now, I'll be honest, sometimes this whole concept of purpose, especially like in Christian circles, can feel like a heavy weight, right? Like I've got to figure out this big daunting thing that God has for me to do. And, or, you know, it's going to be something really big. It's not, you know, just going to be something I can do. Like right now I'm maybe a mom with little kids at home or a really busy season of work. Like how in the world am I supposed to just stop everything and figure out my purpose? I, I want to encourage you. That's not really what this is, right? There are so many ways you can take steps, walk out your purpose without doing any major shifts at all. And if you are in a season where you're like, I have no free time, then just know, friend, that that is your purpose (laughs) in this season. Maybe your purpose is changing diapers for God's glory, (laughs) taking care of little kids because God has given you them as a gift. 
He's given you the gift of motherhood. It's okay to just be faithful in this season. Maybe you're caring for sick parents and that's all you can do right now. That is okay. There is so much grace for these different seasons we walk through in life. But maybe you're just kind of in a dull spot. Maybe you, you know, you have a job and you do it, but nothing really feels like it makes you come alive. You're just not sure if you're using your gifts. You're not sure if you're serving. You're just not sure if you're walking your purpose. For you, my encouragement is just stop. Maybe take a spiritual gifts inventory or set up a coaching call so we can talk about it. I love doing coaching in this arena, but Start to figure out how you're wired. What gifts has God given you and what passions has he given you? What do you get excited about? Is there a certain issue that really makes you come alive? Is there a certain group? Like maybe it's children, maybe it's older people, maybe it's people that have had an abortion or people that have gone through divorce or different things that we go through in life. If you have a passion for one of those people groups, Maybe that's part of the purpose that God has designed for you to serve in. So I just encourage you, start taking steps. Just figure out what it is and then think, okay, what could I do? Could I volunteer two hours a week to work at the Crisis Pregnancy Center? Could I volunteer at my church in the nursery? I'm sure they'd love to have you. (laughs) You know, maybe, maybe it's doing something else. Maybe there's a ministry you follow and you want to see if they need help. Serve in whatever way you can in whatever season you are in. But I tell you, your friends. Once you begin to use those gifts he's given you, you will start to feel the weight of body image issues lift. So in my book, The Burden of Better, How a Comparison-Free Life Leads to Joy, Peace, and Rest, I talk all about the different kinds of grace that God gives us. I talk about saving grace. That's the one most everyone knows about. I talk about sanctifying grace, which you know maybe you've heard of. We all know that we need to be sanctified, right? That's God's process of trying to make us look more like Jesus. Jesus, right? Like working out the kinks in us. But the kind of grace that connects to our purpose is growing grace. That's where in your Christian walk, you are saying, hey, God, I see these gifts you've given me. Now help me to use them. And through this chapter of Burden of Better, I talk about lots of different illustrations of ways we can use our gifts, how it's not acceptable to say, well, I'm not the best at that, so I shouldn't do that. Because friends, seriously, like if only the best singer sang, like radio would be really boring, (laughs) right? If only the best baker baked, like you would be hard pressed to get a wedding cake when you need one, right? We all use the gifts we have without comparing them to how other people are using their gifts or how other people are succeeding in using their gifts. That's God's design. It's not good enough to say, I know you gave me these gifts. I'm just not sure that they're good enough to be used. No, if he gave you the gifts, they're good enough to be used. So today I'm going to use a prayer straight from my book, The Burden of Better. It's a prayer at the end of this chapter on growing grace. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, help me to experience your growing grace and to boldly pursue the purpose for which you've created me. God, free me from the beast of being better and from the pressure to be the best. And instead, God, empower me to serve you faithfully for my good and for your glory. Amen. Well, friends, our verse for today is Romans 8.28. It's a popular one. You may even have it memorized, but it says, and we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Friends, you are called according to his purpose. What purpose does he have for you? I can't wait to hear about it. Drop me a note, Heather at compared to who.me. I'd love to hear how God is speaking to you through the series. Or you can comment. If you click through the show notes, you can comment. Or you can comment on YouTube if you're watching there. I hope you'll subscribe. And we've got just about I don't know, nine days left. So I am excited to hear what God is doing in your life. That's all for today. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. 